Hey guys, welcome back to The Hide. We are back here on the review bench for another old-fashioned rimfire rifle review. This time another Howa out on the bench, but this one is a 22 LR. So being a rimfire, this is the M1100 model 22 LR. So I didn't know that they were actually producing these. I've reviewed a lot of Howas, if you guys have watched the channel for any length of time. But I guess these have been out for a year, maybe two. I hadn't seen them. I just happened upon this one online and it kind of caught my eye. And then I seen the price and it really caught my eye. So these are less than $300. I got it for less than that to the to the FFL. So, I mean, that's, that's saying something for what you're getting. But uh, I want to kind of go through an overview of this rifle, give you all the, uh, the uh, pluses that it has, a few downsides, not many. But um, one of the big uh, gripes that I've seen on this online is that it's not accurate it's not precise but the reviews that i've seen on this they only try like maybe one or two types of ammunition i mean in a rimfire rifle that's complete asinine i mean you can go through 10 different types of ammunition in one of these 22 lrs and none of them will work good but that 11th one that you try that 11th brand that'll be the one that just shoots lights out it's just the way it is there's nothing you can do about it the, un the unfortunate thing about 22 LR and precision testing, finding what ammo it likes, you're going to have to buy a lot of different ammunition. But I have got 10 different loads that we are going to test in this rifle in this video. So it make sure you got a little time because this one's going to take a minute. But let's kind of go over the features of the rifle itself. As I mentioned, it's less than 300 bucks, guys. So if it shoots worth a dang it all i mean it's definitely going to be worth it it does have the nrl 22 style of feel to it with the with the stock the stock kind of reminds me of the older choate industry stocks just by the feel of it and the way that it's made but you guys can see the humidity it is humid as all get out out here today it is air that you can wear guys but uh sports an 18 inch barrel it's a they call it a heavy barrel. It's not as heavy as like what you would find on a Mark II Savage. Uh, it's definitely thinner than that, but it's heavier than a Sporter. It's a little, it's a little, at the muzzle, it's a little bit thicker than a half inch. It is threaded half 28. We are going to shoot this rifle unsuppressed out of the box the way it comes. So that way, those of you guys that don't own a suppressor, you know exactly how it should perform if you get it. Sporting a Riton scope, 6 to 24 power. I went with a Monstrum Tactical, never really heard of that brand before, but they had a one-piece base. If you're looking for it, this does not ship with any scope bases, so you're going to have to buy one. You will need to buy one for a Ruger American Rimfire to fit the Howa M111. The RM175 is the model number of Monstrum, and I'll uh, I'll probably put that link in there because it's actually a really nice scope mount. I'm, I was actually pretty shocked. Um, I've not used any of their products before, but it's pretty cool. I got that one off Amazon. It comes with two 10-round mags, which is a really nice feature. Gun is loaded, or unloaded, excuse me. There is no rounds in the chamber, but you can see they go in just like that. You have the little paddle release down here and come right out. So pretty, pretty simple as far as that goes. The... Uh, like I mentioned, the stock itself has a really good feel to it. There is a flattened forein, so it would be really good for bag work. You could put a, oh, like a, uh, a hook on there, so you could do barricade work with it too for NRL purposes. I really like the pistol grip here on this end. It's really, really nice. The, uh, the feel of that is, is actually pretty good. I would like a little bit more texture on here, but you could rough that up. It has a very thick, squishy butt pad on the back. I'm not really sure why you need that. But it has an overall length of 37 inches. And I'm going to run up and get the trigger scale. I totally forgot that. But I'm going to pause this, come back, and we'll check the uh, trigger pull on this as well. All right, so before I check the trigger pull on this, I want to kind of go over a couple of downsides with this. I did confirm with Legacy Sports, Howa, that this rifle does not fall into the guarantee, the MOA guarantee. So if you know anything about how a rifles, they come from the factory with an MOA guarantee. The rimfire rifles do not, however. I did confirm that, and it was also told to me by them at Howa that if you adjust the trigger in any way, it is adjustable, but if you adjust it from the factory, it also voids the warranty. That's kind of a, uh, that makes really no sense to me. 
Um, why make the trigger adjustable if you're going to penalize the, the consumer for using it? But that's neither here nor there. I mean, it is what it is. But let's get a, a trigger pull on it. There is no ammunition in the chamber. Let's see what we got here. I have to say, just from handling it, it feels really good. So it is at right at about three pounds. Now, this does have the two-stage trigger like you would expect from most Howas. So you have that take up right there and then you go into your brake. So, and I have to say, I love Howas triggers. The trigger face feels really good. It's kind of wide. So this feels good on the finger when you're pulling it. Um, another downside that I noticed, and I'm gonna test it as is, but the stock is touching the barrel here on the fore end. I am not going to fix that for this video. It is getting shot as is right out of the box. So we're going to see together how well it does. This is a 1 in 16 twist and does come with a pretty good sized oversized bolt handle. So that's pretty nice too. But um, let's get you guys a, a weight here. Now again, granted this is going to be as configured, but... Just to kind of give you an idea, if you did go with a, a 6 to 24 power scope. So you're looking at about 7 pounds, 4 ounces. It does have a very nice feel to it. Like I said, that stock, the stock is surprisingly stable. It's surprisingly sturdy in the hand. So I'm anxious to see what it will do off the bench. Now, let's go through our ammunition here. Like I said, I will be shooting 10 different types of ammunition. I'm going to shoot 15 fouling shots before I shoot any for groups. So we're gonna shoot 15 shots, foul the barrel, and then shoot five shots for groups. So first up, we're gonna shoot some 40 grain CCI target. This is just round, round nose mini mag. I've got some of the old standard velocity. The, uh, I mean, this is basically what most target ammo is going to function like. This is probably some of the best for the price spent in my testing. Um, I got some SK long range match I had, uh, some Ely team, some Ely club, I've got Ely match, I got some Ely target, there we go, I got some SK rifle match, really interested to see how well that does in this, um, <laughs> some Lapua Midas X because why not, I had it. And then we're going to shoot just a uh, group of bulk, so just some Federal Auto Mash to kind of see how it does. But uh, enough griping from me. Let's get this thing on the bench and start doing some fun stuff. All right, guys, I've got our first 15 rounds fouled through the chamber of the CCI standard velocity. So we're going to try five of these first for groups at 50 yards. And then we'll kind of move on down the line and we'll see what we got at the end. So without further ado... Let's see what we can do here. Nope. Didn't like that. Looks like I may have pulled that first one, guys. Yeah, I think that first one got away from me a little bit there, but not too bad. All right, so I'm going to foul the chamber with 15 rounds of this uh, 40 grain round nose mini mags, and we'll put another five down range. All right, guys, next up is the 40 grain round nose CCI mini mag. So let's try five of these. And guys, I cannot put into words how hot it is out here today. <laughs>
around up there again too. Yeah. Man, what is the deal? I don't like that. I can tell you that. Man, looks like it's trying to double feed. Kind of shave that one off. We're going to try another one. Give it the best chance it can get here. Interesting. I don't like that feeding issue. And this should be the last one. Look pretty good there. Two, not so much. All right, so into our first, what I would say, official match load. We're gonna try five rounds of this SK rifle match. I'm gonna foul the 15 shots and we'll see what it does, guys. All right, guys, next up, we've got the SK rifle match here. Now this is a subsonic load. I believe this is probably a 40 grain round nose. It does not advertise, but we'll see what, uh, what we can do here. You all want to follow along in the target cam. Oh, it did it again. Dang it. I don't know what the deal with that is, but I sure do not like that. I don't know if it's a chamber issue or what. I'm going to have to take a little bit closer to look at that, guys. But it sure puts a damper in my shooting. Looks like our first shot keeps getting... That should be five. Yep. So that's not bad with the exception of the first one. So we're going to try five rounds of the Ely Match. This is also a 40 grain round nose. So we'll try, um, we'll foul 15 of these. Shoot five for groups and see what we got with it, guys. All right, guys, we've got five rounds of our Ely match loaded up here after our after our fouling shots. So let's uh, put these down range and see if we can do do any better with these. Man, that is aggravating. Again, guys, this is this is out of the box. I have not shot this up until this video, so this is news to me. Last one here. Alright, that's not a bad group. 
that's not too bad. All right, so I'm going to foul up the barrel with uh, 15 rounds of this Ely Target. This is also a 40 grain round nose. So we'll see, uh, see what we can do with these guys. All right, guys, we've got five rounds of our Ely Target here loaded up in the mag. We've got it fouled, so let's see what we can do here on this center target. deal with that guys I have to say I do not like that at all and not sure what the deal with that is we will definitely have to take a look at that later Definitely uh, unearthed one issue with this gun. My goodness, can't even get through a whole magazine. Damn, it's Christmas. Oh, yeah, it messed that one up real good, too. So there's two. How many rounds have I wasted doing this review now just because it won't feed right? I'm going to go down and reposition the target cam. I'll foul the barrel with 15 rounds of this SK long range match, and then we'll put five on target for groups, guys. All right, guys, got the target cam switched over to the other target. We've got our 15 fouling shots through here. I've got five more of the SK long range match loaded in here. So let's see what we can do and hopefully calm down some of these feeding issues. Feeding a little better now. One more. All right. Again, nothing to write home about there. So, foul up with this, some of this Ely Team 40 grain flat nose and see what we got, guys. All right, guys, we've got our five rounds of Ely Team here. It's fouled. So let's see what these these will do. Man. Do not know what to deal with that is. tell you that right there is going to get old quick guys
Well, it's definitely a decent group. It seems to like the Ely team. I think I kind of pulled that last shot a little bit, but. All right, so next up is gonna be this Ely Club. I'll put uh, 15 Fowlers through through the barrel on this, and we'll put five down range for groups. All right, guys, we got our five rounds of, of Ely Club loaded up. Let's take our first shot here and see what we can do. Man, this is definitely not, definitely not good, guys. All right, last shot here. Okay, man, trying to get to a full magazine, that is absolutely ridiculous and frustrating. Okay, so next up is going to be the Lapua Midas Plus. We'll uh, foul the barrel with this stuff and see what we can do downrange with it. All right, guys, we've got our five rounds of Lapua Midas Plus loaded in the, in the mag. Hopefully we can get some better feeding. My gosh, that is absolutely frustrating and ridiculous out of a brand new rifle. But let's uh, try the five of these and see what happens. this either my goodness You've got to be kidding me literally some of the most expensive 22 ammunition you can buy Well, I thought we had something here, but... So, not a bad group, but not what you would expect from a 20 plus box, dollar box of ammunition. So, finally, Federal Auto Match, I expect this to probably look like we shot it with a shotgun, but we'll try some of this too. So I'll shoot 15 rounds to foul it up with this, and we'll see what happens, guys. All right, guys, we've got our 15 shots fouled in the barrel, five loaded in the mag here. Let's see what, uh, let's see what these can do. And so far about what, gosh dang it, about what I would expect out of this ammunition. And last one here. Alright, so, 
Okay, I'm gonna run down. I'm gonna get our targets, mark which ammunition shot which group. We'll get some final thoughts on the rifle, and I'll see you then. All right, guys, I went back. I've got our targets marked up here. We're gonna take a look at those here in just a second, but just to kind of go over the feeding issue, I think it could have been partially my fault. After doing a little looking here, after I stopped the camera and really looked at the gun, I think perhaps I was short stroking the bolt. Um, I don't know, but I put two or three more magazines through this, just cycling it. And if I went all the way back, it seemed to work pretty well. So if I go all the way back, oh, and as soon as I say that, you can see that the magazine shot one right up into the top of the chamber. So I wonder if this isn't partially a magazine issue. Um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on that, but I can say just from back here cycling through this here just for a few minutes, if I went all the way back with the bolt and then all the way forward, it seemed to work really good. Now I have to say guys, the, the, the fit and feel of the rifle is absolutely awesome. The angle here on the back of the pistol grip is perfect for laying your thumb. The pistol grip itself is really wide. You get a really good purchase on the grip itself. The oversized bolt handle and bolt are extremely smooth. This is one of the smoothest, probably rimfire actions that I have felt out of a sub $300 gun. I mean, it blows Savage away. However, let's take a look at the, at the shooting here and see what we did. So first up, CCI standard. Now again, this is at 50 yards. That's nothing to write home about. That one shot there in the upper right-hand corner, that could have been me. We had four over here. Next up is going to be the CCI Mini Mag. This is the round nose. Three good shots here, two not so good there. SK Rifle Match, again, that could be me just pulling shots. I, I suck. Clearly, I don't know how to shoot, so take that with a grain of salt. But we did have four really good ones here. The Ely Match did really well. Um, that's not bad. I mean, I'd like to see better, but that's not terrible. And then the Ely target looks like you used a shotgun on that. So next target, we started off with the SK long range rifle match. We had three shots here, then two here. Uh, next up was the Ely team. It shot pretty decent. Okay. And then the Ely club, uh, about, about the same. I mean, it's pretty accurate, but just not real precise. Um, Midas Plus did okay. I mean, my Savage Mark II will literally shoot that into a hole. So, and then finally, about what we expected with the auto match, it's kind of all over the place. But overall, guys, I mean, I kind of got to give this gun maybe a 5 or a 6 out of 10. With the feeding issue, that absolutely sucks and is really annoying. I think the rifle is capable of shooting well. I mean, it's shot the Ely match fairly decent. Heck, it even shot CCI standard fairly decent with the exception of that flyer. Um, let's see, Ely Team, it did okay with that. But uh, overall, I would really expect more out of a Howell rifle. Yeah, guys, I know that it's sub 300 bucks, but I mean, it's made in Japan and Howell produces a really, really nice product. Their Centerfire guns, I have shot so much sub MOA stuff out of basically every Howa centerfire rifle I've ever owned. I would have expect no less, honestly, from this one. But, um, you know, uh, stay tuned. I'm probably going to get an update video on this. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see this out again. I'd like to go ahead and make sure that barrel is completely free floated. As I mentioned, the barrel is touching the stock right here, as you can see. So, I'd like to do that, get a few more rounds to it, maybe see if that magazine issue kind of works itself out. I do have two magazines, so I'll try the other one and see. But um, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you all, has anyone tried one of these rifles yet? What's been your experience? Let me know down in the comments. Shoot me a message over on the Facebook page. And as always, guys, shoot straight. Later.